Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, well, I was curator, right now I'm furloughed. But thanks to your support, we've been able to raise nearly $22,000 uh, to continue to fund uh, this YouTube channel over the next six months while uh, the museum is closed. So I really appreciate you guys allowing us to do that. We really like making these videos. Uh, and I guess you guys like watching them. Uh, we are still collecting money to support the museum while we are closed. Uh, check out the link in the description below to our GoFundMe campaign. Uh, and if you like the content we're putting out and would like to help support us and the museum, uh, please do so. I, I will be personally very appreciative of it. Uh, today's video, we are talking about some of the five inch magazines on the ship and uh, how they work and how they changed over time. So as designed, IO class battleships had 10 twin five inch mounts. And uh, these mounts were fed from six magazines down on third deck. Um, in the 1980s, four of these mounts on each side were removed in order to install missiles. Uh, in some spaces, they, in, in some cases, they needed the space, and in other cases, they just needed the top weight removed. And these guns require something like 100 people per mount uh, between the gun house, the upper handling room, and the uh, shell and powder magazines down here on third deck. So they're incredibly manpower intensive, uh, which wasn't so much of an issue in the 1940s when you were drafting everyone. But by the 1980s, when we had switched to an all volunteer military uh, and the five inch 38 had become largely obsolete, um, they just didn't need as many as uh, had initially been carried. If you look at a modern destroyer, it has a single automatic five inch gun um, that hardly needs manpower at all outside of pushing a button and potentially loading the uh, magazine drum that uh, feeds the gun. But these ships are fairly manpower intensive and uh, the 16 inch guns are slow firing so they did retain some of the five inch weapons and this is where they were fed powder from. This is an unmodified space. The forward two five inch guns, uh, mount 51 on the port side, excuse me, mount 51 and 53 on the starboard side, and mounts 52 and 54 on the port side, were retained throughout the ship's whole career. And uh, here we are in the port side magazine that fed 52 and 54. Uh, because both guns were kept throughout the whole career, this magazine remained largely unchanged. So each barrel has a dredger hoist associated with it, and this is a dredger hoist. Uh, and we've talked about these in other videos that you may have seen, but uh, basically it is a conveyor belt that has lips in it that you sit the shell on, and it will hoist it, and it can even go around angles to get up through the ship so it's not a straight line that an explosion can come down from the gun mount all the way to here. Uh, and this takes it up to either the main deck uh, or the 01 level, depending on the gun mount, to an upper handling room where it is transferred from the dredger hoist to a separate uh, shell hoist or powder hoist as the case may be. Uh, and these are great. They outfitted virtually all American ships during World War II, if it had anywhere from a three inch gun to a six inch gun, a standard dredger hoist could handle it. So it uh, could handle the powder for it and the projectile. So a really great uh, device here. To operate it, you open the door, which is closed for protection. It's spring loaded, so if I let go, it'll close. Uh, locks in place and then this lever would release it and then you take shells from any of the racks around here behind me or to the side. Uh, shells are 55 pounds so they can be manually carried unlike the shells for the 
16 inch guns, which are not. You drop it in here and you kick the foot pedal, which opens the door and allows the shell to drop in onto the conveyor belt, which is just continuously moving as they're calling for stuff up, stuff up above. So in addition to the actual powder magazines that we've just talked about, there are some five inch uh, projectiles and whatnot that are stored in other locations. So we are in the same passageway that one of the five inch magazines is in, uh, directly behind where the camera is located. And uh, here we've got some other uh, five inch storage. These racks right here are for dummy rounds used in training. So uh, the dummy powder canisters, usually made out of wood to simulate the proper weight, are stored here. And the uh, dummy shells are stored down here. Now, those are often used in association with a practice loading machine, which this ship carried through uh, most of her career, but not in the 80s. Uh, however, these racks were never removed and may have continued to be used for shell storage uh, later on. It would have almost certainly been inert because we're just right off of a passage where there's, it's not locked up in any way. Uh, and then this door, which has a special lock on it, you can see, in addition to a chain lock, is the white phosphorus magazine. So this is uh, Wiley Peat rounds. These are Willy Peat rounds, uh, and they are significantly more volatile than the standard five inch rounds. Uh, so they are stored in a separate magazine when carried. It's right next to the regular five inch magazine, so you can easily get these to the hoists if for some reason you have to do that sort of uh, fire mission. Um, these use white phosphorus to, uh, to burn and uh, so that is great for deforesting areas, uh, incendiary type use, uh, and it does a number on humans, although it is banned by the Geneva Convention. All of the five inch magazines are down on third deck, accessed off of Broadway. Uh, they each branch off on a passageway like this one. Uh, some of those passageways are pretty exclusively to access the five inch magazines and the void space is outboard of them. Uh, but some of them, like this one, are branching off of trunks that lead down to the engine rooms. So in this case, engine room number one is accessed through this trunk, and the starboard side forward five inch magazine and powder room is down the P way from it. The amidships five inch guns, the uh, third of the five twin mounts on each side of the ship, were each fed from their own magazine, while the forward two were fed from one magazine and the aft two from another. Uh, and those magazine spaces were completely removed in the 1980s when those gun mounts were removed. In the case of the starboard side magazine, it was converted into three separate spaces. Uh, on the other side of this bulkhead is the radio transmitting room, which had always existed, but was they knocked out a bulkhead and moved it over into the magazine and erected a new bulkhead. This space where we are has a lot of electrical equipment relating to the Harpoon and Tomahawk missile systems that were added in the 80s. Uh, so they needed this, uh, they needed to take over one of these converted spaces so that they had the room they needed for the modern equipment going in. And uh, uh, apparently the electricians who worked in this space were on the nerdier side of things and uh, they listed on their uh, power tags here. I don't know if these were unused and they listed them as a joke or if they just knew what they were so they could jokingly write the wrong thing. Uh, but this one powers our warp drive, our transporter room, uh, our deflection shields, and our photon torpedoes. In addition to harpoons and tomahawks. Uh, and harpoon systems here. They also keep a tech library behind me. This was also part of the uh, magazine for the starboard side centerline five inch gun. It got converted into an AFFF 
or aqueous film forming foam, uh, a firefighting foam, mixing station. On many ships, the foam, you just use your fire water, uh, your fire and flushing system with your fire hoses and you would have an eductor hose that would go into a little probably three gallon uh, bucket of AFFF and it would mix and spray that firefighting foam. On the battleships in the 80s, they added a specific mixing uh, station for that and they used part of this magazine for it. Here on the deck, uh, you can see the remnants of a dredger hoist and the uh, catch tray that was built around it to uh, catch hydraulic fluid that leaked out. And you can tell this space wasn't purpose built for, for this. The door is over in that corner, uh, but the old World War II light box is over here. So you gotta walk all the way into the dark room and over here to hit your light switch. As you can see from the stenciling on the pipe overhead, uh, this was installed to be part of the Tomahawk Deluge system. Uh, the Tomahawks have a sprinkler system built into the armored box launchers just like the magazines did so that uh, if there's a fire in that area you can wash them down and those warheads won't kick off on deck or won't cook off on deck. This space would have presumably at one time also had a, uh, a chill water radiator system in the overhead and that has been cut out and covered with uh, soundproofing insulation so it's no longer there. Oh, but if you look at the overhead over here, you can see where they just welded a plate on where this dredger hoist passed through the uh, splinter deck. You can see how thick that is and uh, how built up the welds for the dredger hoist were as built. So initially as built, the radio transmitting room where we are right now uh, would have terminated roughly where I'm standing with the bulkhead down the space. Uh, in the 1980s, when they removed the 5-inch magazine from this side, they moved the bulkhead, it looks like, six feet that way, and uh, installed air conditioning system. So this would have been the time period when they were adding air conditioning to the ship. The space would have already been chilled in some manner to keep the electronics safe, uh, but this was the 1980s system that they used, and uh, so they had to expand the space to add it, and the deleted magazine gave room for that. Uh, here on the port side of the ship, they did considerably less work converting the uh, center uh, magazine. Here is the full space. It seems like they tore out the bulkhead that would have separated powder from shells, and they removed the dredger hoists, uh, but otherwise they kept the space the same. They didn't move bulkheads around, uh, to add other rooms. This whole space is the number two air conditioning space. So again, uh, the ship was largely unair conditioned for most of her career. She had an old drafty military. You could force those guys to do whatever you wanted. Uh, when the Navy switches to volunteers in the mid 70s, following the Vietnam War, uh, they have to start providing more amenities for those personnel. So the ship got some air conditioning for them. Uh, but the bulk of the air conditioning though is because we're adding more digital technology and your computers and radios and missiles all need to be kept at a specific temperature uh, that you don't have to worry about with analog things like the 16 inch shell. And so the ship gets a lot of air conditioning installed in 1982. So now we are in the aft uh, port five inch magazine, and this would have fed the after two port side guns, one of which is still retained as mount 56, which we fire on occasion, uh, and the other one was removed, the one that was uh, mounted on the O3 level, was removed and that uh, became part of the missile decks for the Tomahawk systems. So they retained the dredger hoists for the five inch gun over here, and here, where one of the other ones was, has been removed. However, the armor pass-through uh, where it went through the deck has been used as a cable run for, looks like, big 220 voltage uh, power lines. 
So prior to filming this video, I long wondered why some of the dredger hoists, uh, the armored passing chutes for them were retained when the guns themselves uh, were removed. And in this case, the actual base of the hoist. Well, it's because they were reusing it to run cable through. And this is regular uh, cable. It's not the armored cable that's got the metal mesh around it. So they put it inside of the armored box, which I believe is two and a half inches thick. The other dredger hoist over here, which was removed, was plated over and had some plumbing run to it and through it, presumably. And this is part of the saltwater deluge system for the tomahawks, which, since this dredger hoist runs basically up to the where the tomahawks are mounted, they've got an armored box to run this pipe through. So meanwhile, the powder magazine that fed those dredger hoists out there uh, continued to be a powder magazine throughout the ship's career, but when she was mothballed, a lot of equipment from the main deck was placed in storage here. So we've got some of the J davits that uh, would have carried 20 millimeter ammunition up to the phalanxes. Uh, we've got some boxes that are filled with uh, plastic construction type helmets that the deck force would have used during unrep. Uh, we've got the block and tackle systems and the cables for the boat boom, which is on the port side aft end of the superstructure. Uh, and the unrep lights, a number of other uh, random loose associated things. Here is a, a Gibson Girl lifeboat radio that's just been stored down here. Third division hard hat. Expired. I wouldn't recommend using this anymore. So, thank you for watching our video on the 5-inch magazines and how they changed over time. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content. Even though the museum is closed, we are going to continue to put out content thanks to our uh, so far partially successful GoFundMe campaign. And if you would like to continue to see content, check the link in the description below to uh, find out how you can support us to uh, so we can keep making these videos. Uh, and all, as always, if you have questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below.